Okay. So we have done. Hey guys, whole class waiting for you here. Let's go. We have done addition and subtraction. Well, first we did simplifying, then addition and subtraction, then multiplication, and you probably knew this day was coming. We are now division. Now division is a whole other can of worms that we're going to open, and it is uh, a lot more complex. It has a lot of rules compared to all the rest. So we're going to spend two days. We're going to finish the unit tomorrow. And next week is service days, right? So Monday I'll start the new unit. Uh, Thursday I'll do an, um, we'll do practice tests, and then Friday is your exam. So you have a long time to study this, and um, everyone's going to focus on getting that hundred. Okay, you'll know if you know all this stuff before Friday. If you don't, then you need some to do some work, right? And if you're going into the exam knowing that you don't know stuff. Like, you're not a 20-1 student. That's not the kind of student that does well. The kind of student that does well in this class, it bugs them when they don't know something. Okay? They get, you know, they get it fixed when they don't know something. Okay? You're wasting your time in the 20-1 and the 30-1 if you're not that kind of person, right? That is the kind of student that does well in here. It's not the, the brainiacs. It's not the people that know everything. It's the people that just they're relentless when they don't get something okay and you know who you are right and then if you're too laid back and let it go or whatever it's just going to catch up with you now for dividing very very similar rules to multiplying okay now if you look at like b b is a great example to talk about how to divide now we can divide them. Why? Why can we divide them? There's only one reason why. They have the same index. Okay? So, make sure they have the same index before you start. Okay? Now, next. These thingies, what are they called? Coefficients. See, you're not totally blank. There's something up there. Okay, now, what is 8 divided by 2? 4. Okay, see, so that's all you do. And then you do these next, and they are called the radicands, right? So we are, and don't be like me and always forget to put the 3 up there, because we are doing cube. Now, 21 divided by 3 is 7. Okay, so what are the steps? Okay, so... First of all, index must be the same. Then we divide the numerical coefficients. Two, divide the radicand. And three, simplify if you can. Okay? Now, why don't we go and uh, let's do this one. Okay? Now, this one, um, it's a setup. And it's a setup to say, hey, are you going to sit and look at this one for 10 minutes and struggle with it? Or are you going to simplify it first? Sorry, guys. Okay. So, what are we going to do? We are going to always... It, it's too big. Even with multiplying, simplify it first and your life will be simpler. Now, the first thing. We need to find a perfect cube in here. What's a perfect cube in 162? Oh, that's fast. Is, it, is that in there? But 81 is a perfect square, not a perfect cube. 64 isn't in 162. Okay. <laughs> huh? 27, good. 27 times times 6. Okay. Now the bottom, 20...
Okay, I'm looking for a cube, a perfect cube in 128. You can go bigger than 8, and you're right, 64 times 2. Okay. But I haven't done any division yet, right? I'm still like getting this thing simplified. So the 27 is going to come out and become a 3. And a 64 is going to come out and be a 4. Okay. So rewriting this, this will be 30 root or cube root 6 over 80 cube root 2. Again, I've done actually no operation yet. I have just done simplifying. Now, 30 over 80, what would that be? 3 over 8. Okay, all we ever have to do is reduce. And if you really, really uh, struggle with reducing, just go 30 divided by 80 and then hit math, enter, enter. And it'll always reduce it. Okay, this one's pretty obvious, right? And then root 6 divided by root 2 would be cube root 3. Good. Now you can also write this as 3 eighths cube root 3. Okay. Okay. Now let's look at this one because um, this is obviously a different scenario than just the one we did above. The way that you can think about this is the same thing as root 24 over root 6 plus root 48 over root 6 minus root 108 over root 6. Now what, do, what should we do first on this one? Sorry? What should we do? You can simplify. The Sometimes I guess it's luck, but remember how I said you should always simplify first? Sometimes, but if you could see root 6 goes nicely into uh, 24, right? So what's root 24 divided by root 6? It's not 4, it is root 4. Okay, plus what is root 48 divided by root 6? Root 8 minus root 108 divided by root 6 root 18. Now it's not so scary. Now if you if you look at this, I know this is weird, but this is identical to that, right? So you do a couple things and then it's not so scary all of a sudden. Okay? I mean, at least to me, it doesn't look as bad. Now, we can do some math here. What is square root 4? That's just 2. I mean, it's getting kicked out. You know, and I'm getting students at this stage, and they're going, Mr. Well, what happens to the square root sign? I'm going the same thing that happened to it two weeks ago. If I said square root 4 to you, you would just say 2. You wouldn't be all worried about the square root sign. Okay? But now people are worried about the square root sign. And they're like, Mr. Well, is square root 4 simplified enough? And I'm like, no. Like, that's 2. Like, yeah, but square root 4, 2, same thing. Yeah, but it's not simplified square root 4. It's because you guys are getting so, like you're using it so much that you think square root 4 is simple. And I, I think we can all agree it's not the hardest square root in the world, but it's still not as simple as it can be. Square root 4 is 2, and you don't have anything after that. Okay. Now, 8, it's not a perfect square, but what is a perfect square in there? 4 times 2 minus, this will be 9 times 2. Okay, now here we want to kick the 4 out and become a 2. Now make sure you always double check because I have 4s coming out and they're staying as 4s for some of you. Okay, and 9s coming out becoming a 3. So then we would have 2 plus 2 root 2 minus 3 root 2. Now, you see how these two can play together? Because they have the same radicate. So that would be 2 
minus minus one root two or just minus root two. It doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to talk about rationalizing the denominator. Now it is against the law to have a radical in the bottom. Okay? In some countries you'd get killed for that. Okay? You can never have a radical in the denominator, in the bottom. Never. Okay? So if you ever leave an answer with the radical in the denominator, you're probably going to get it wrong. That's not simplified. You're never allowed to have it. It's like you're never allowed to have a decimal in a fraction. Okay, you shouldn't have 0.2 over 8. Okay, You have to make it 20 or 2 over 80. You have to move the decimal. Okay, Now, I just want you to look at A. Let's just do A and I'm going to show you how this works. Now, In mathematics, are you allowed to multiply by 1 and not change the answer? Like, give me any number in the world. Think about it. Get it in your head. Multiply by 1. Is it the same number? Okay. I didn't know your number, but you all said yes. So I think it's fair to say, if you multiply by 1, it doesn't change your answer. So all I'm going to do, look at example 4a. All I'm going to do is multiply by 1, and that will get rid of b square. Okay? Because I'm allowed to multiply by 1. You guys all said, yeah. So I can just multiply by 1, and I will get rid of the square root 13, the radical in the bottom, right? Okay, I'm getting a lot of dirty looks. So I'm just going to do it. I'm going to multiply this by square root 13 over square root 13. Now, did I multiply by 1? Yes? Is square root 13 over square root 13 1? Okay. Now, there is 10 gazillion numbers out there. Why did I pick 13? Well, what happens when those two bottoms multiply? They don't cancel. It would turn into what number? 13. And what happens to the top? 1 times root 13 is root 13 over 13. So all I did was multiply by 1, a.k.a. 13, root 13 over root 13. And now do you see that root 13 over 13 does not have one of those thingies in the bottom? Okay, there's no house in the bottom. Now, if you don't believe me, you could put 1 over square root 13 in your calculator, equals, and then you could do root 13 over 13 and press equals. You get the same decimal. And I hope on an exam, when they say rationalize the denominator, um, you're not going, oh, I hope I got that right. Okay? So, it's pretty well that simple. Let's do B. B, what would I multiply by? root 2 over root 2. That would give me, pop would be root 10 over 2. Now, the, again, why are you doing that? Because it's against the law. You cannot have, there's rules in math, okay? You just don't get to do what you want when you come in here. There's universal rules, okay? And they say that uh, mathematics, no matter what country you go to, there is no translation that has to be done. Okay? It's all math is math. Okay? It's not languages are always different. If you go to Russia, if you go to Japan, whatever. But the symbols, the math, it's all the same. Okay? It's a nice thing whenever I get a student here from another country, Germany, you name it, they always do the best in math because they're not learning a new language. Right? And probably they took the course, who knows? But they don't have to learn any new language. Like, this is the math they've always been doing. Whereas English class, I mean, they're German, and they're in English class. I mean, that's the toughest one. Social. Like, they're missing a lot of the things because the teacher's talking so fast, right? 
well, nah, if I do this, they're right at home. Like they feel comfortable. Okay? Now, let's look at this one. Example 5a. What would you multiply the, to get rid of that root 7? Mm -hmm. Same thing. Root 7 over root 7. Up top, I will get 7 root 7. And on the bottom, I will get... What did I do? Did that not confuse you guys or what? There we go. Okay. Okay, well, can I slow it down? Because I'm going to lose some people. So that would be 3 times 7. Right? Yes? You guys doing okay this morning? Just go like this and make sure there's something happening there, right? Because I'm a little scared for something. Okay, so this would be 7 root 7 over over 21. Am I done? The other ones I was done. This one I'm not. Why? That's not, this isn't reduced, okay? You must have it reduced. So 7 over 21 is huh? 1 over 3. So it's root 7 over 3. Sure. Only because I like you. Anybody else? Would? Okay. Um, let's go right to example 6, okay? Now, there is actually three ways, but we're just going to talk about two ways to do this one. Now, obviously, you're going to see a, re a root 2 in the bottom, and you're going to be knowing, okay, you're doing rationalizing the denominator today, so you know what you're going to do? Just rationalize denominators. You're going to forget about other ways to do these things, and there's a saying that when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail, okay? So when you're a surgeon, and somebody comes to you with a problem, they're going to, they're going to say surgery. Okay, or maybe a physiotherapist would go, no, no, I wouldn't do, let's, we can do physio on that, we don't have to go to surgery, right? Well, this one, we're doing rationalized the denominator right now, so that's what you're going to do. But there is a quicker way. The quicker way would be to, this is the same thing as through 18 over root 2 minus root 12 over root 2. So what would you do? Could you not divide them both out? So this would be 3 root 9 minus root 6. What's root 9? 3. So this is the same thing as 3 times 3 minus root 6, which is 9 minus root 6. Right? Now, but we do know this new trick, rationalize the denominator, okay? Now you, should, you could simplify this one too, right? 18 and 12 can both be simplified. What's in 18? 9. And what's in 12? 4. So we could simplify. But let's say we're not going to simplify because we didn't notice that, right? So I got 3 root 18 minus root 12. And that's all over root 2. So I'm going to multiply by root 2 over root 2. Okay? Now, remember, the book isn't going to show you three ways to do each question. And students at this point, and that's understandable, they doubt, oh, they didn't do rationalizing the denominator, so I must be wrong. Okay? Just make a note. Could I have rationalized the denominator here? And then you can ask me that tomorrow, and then I would say, yeah. Okay? So this one, you could see this goes to here, this goes to here. So then I would get 3 root... What would I get? No. 3 root 36 minus root 24. And that's all over 2. Now, what is 3 root 36? So that is 6 times, because that's coming out, times 3, which is 18 minus root, is there any nice square roots? 4, good. 4 times 6. So this is coming out to become a 
two. So I have 18 minus 2 root 6 all divided by 2. Now remember that 2 does both of them. So you can write that as 18 over 2 minus 2 root 6 over 2. What's that going to give you? Root 6. Okay. How does that work? Is, that, is this everyone getting this? Okay. So tomorrow we're going to do uh, conjugates to get rid of the bottom. And we're done. Okay. So Monday, I think Monday I have planned, I'm going to start the new lesson, new unit. Tuesday, Wednesday, you're out of the school, working like dogs, right? Thursday, practice test. Friday, the test. So we're going to be done Friday. You actually have an entire week to really, really polish this stuff off, right? And, you know, I'm seeing, it usually takes kind of the second year, but I'm seeing some big changes in some students already by their quizzes, by just, you know, they're, they're doing better. Right? And you, because you guys are out of summer mode by now, I don't think you have any, you can't blame summer anymore. Okay? And you wait. You go, some of you guys that were thinking last year it was hard, <clears throat> wait till later and you look back on it and you're going to go, it wasn't that hard. It was just the time that you were in it. No, it doesn't matter what unit I put first. Okay? Um, there's that, that summer brain that comes in, right? And, and a few students just grow up quick, too, and they go, okay, I'm not going to get away with what I did last year. Uh, you know, it's time to uh, figure this out, right? So I am hoping for a lot more hundreds next Friday. A lot more. Okay, so we're going to go uh, 1 to 14, and for all of those, you can do A, C, E, G, dot, dot, dot. Okay, so this stuff goes really fast if you start seeing the ones you start with. I mean, now, and I said this to the other class because it's kind of driving me nuts. Um, you guys should be checking the answers all the time because I have students that have said that they've been doing all their homework. They've just been doing it wrong. Now, the point is not to get your homework done because if that's all it was, why don't you just copy from the back of the book and look how awesome you would do, okay? Well, you wouldn't do awesome on the quizzes or anything like that. You'd fail the unit exam. But you do it wrong 20 times, you're going to learn that way really well. So you're actually going to be worse off than someone that never learned it at all. Because now I'm going to get you to unlearn your bad habit, get you to neutral, and then get you to learn new habits, right? So look at it. You know, do a question, look, do a question, look, right? And, you know, if you need, put your formula sheet where the answers are all the time so you can get to it quick. But, uh, you know, I would, if it was me, I would always have those um, solutions open that are on the website. Everybody knows, has found them now, right? It's always the first one. The entire unit is there. You have to find what page, and then you've got it all nice and long, okay? And if you're you know, ever really just, you know, if you want, you can just come up here, right here on this podium, and you can look, okay? This is the physical copy. You can actually look at it, and just don't take it anywhere, okay? I kind of use it. So just look at it and go, okay, you know, I made a mistake. I'm not getting the right answer. There's always some students that always, they have no problem. They just come up and look, right? And some students are, like, so scared they think they're going to get shot or something. Right, and uh, and that's probably why they don't let teachers have guns because they might. Okay? But I don't have one, so you're gonna be okay. Don't work. <laughs>